Hey everyone, welcome to your Monday. We are in Exodus chapter 25. not 32, not 32, 25. 25. And we're going to talk about the tabernacle and what kind of stuck out to us. That's right, episode 135. And what does it mean that God tabernacles with us? Mm-hmm. I'm glad you asked. What Again, does that great mean? question. Well, look at verse <laughs> chapter 25 verse 1. Says the Lord said to Moses, "Tell the Israelites to bring me an offering. You are to receive the offering for me from everyone whose heart prompts them to give. Mm-hmm. So before you get to the building of the tabernacle... <laughs> Sorry, um, I just about fell in my chair. That's all right. Don't go anywhere. We need you. Um, what's interesting, as they're building the tabernacle, yes. is that already God's getting to the heart of generosity, mm-hmm. including them in his work. You know, that verse says, I guess technically it's verse 2, um, receive an offering from everyone whose heart prompts them to give. Mm. So God's extending an invitation to say, join me in what I'm doing, but I want your heart to be in it. Mm -hmm. I want it to be genuine. I want it to be, uh, I want you to be with me. So when it comes to tabernacle, that is mean, that means God's dwelling with us. God is with us. We'll talk about that in a little bit, how Mm -hmm. we flesh that out through the rest of the Bible. Mm -hmm. But I think of some of the Old Testament prophets that talk about God's heart and his desire. He's talking about, he wants to give him a new heart, but that he's going to be, our God, and we're going to be his people. Yeah. And he said, I'm going to dwell with them. Yeah. And he says, I want you to participate Mm -hmm. in what I'm doing here. Yeah. Like, I mean, you've read in Ezekiel 2, Ezekiel 37, 27, that God wants to tabernacle with them, that Mm -hmm. I'll be their God, like you just said. And that's so significant in the Christian religion because like gods don't want to be with their people. Like they're, they want to be worshiped. They want to be revered and they want to be far away. And like, this is unlike any Yahweh is unlike any other God that people might have mm-hmm. had. Because from the beginning, from Genesis, his desire has been to be with his people. Yeah. And now even in the brokenness that occurred in Genesis chapter three and that has just lingered in creation, that um, desire is still yeah. present. Well go to Revelation. Uh, <laughs> Revelation twenty one, yes. I think you've got it there on the phone. That, I do. That's the end of the Bible and you see how it began mm-hmm. and ends mm-hmm. saying God I want to be God wants to be with his people. Yes. So this is Revelation, like Clark said, 21 verses three through five. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as Mm. their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain anymore for any, nor pain anymore for the former things have passed away. Yeah. So God wants to be with us. Mm-hmm. But what's interesting, the next, what, eight verses, nine verses or so, it kind of unpacks the details. Moses gives us the deets on yeah. what the tabernacle is going to look like. And what's interesting, the study Bible I was reading said, mm-hmm. as you get closer to where the presence of God is going to be, yeah. the stones become more precious. Hmm. More precious. Oh, my. As Smeagol says, yes. If you guys don't know this, Clark can talk like Smeagol. Oh, spiritual gift. Really I can talk like well. a weird creature Someday, from Lord of the Rings. We will do an entire podcast. I will promise you this. <laughs> as Clark being Smeagol, and I don't even, I'll just like be somebody else. I, I won't even be here. It'll just be Clark's <laughs> voice. Smeagol it is, talking to Gollum. It's phenomenal anyway, and the, creepy at the same the time. The stones become more <laughs> precious. I can't do it. Not the Smeagol voice. More precious as you get closer to the presence of God. It's more expensive. Awesome. They're more rare. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool to think through the intentionality here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, But what's cool, again, going back to verse 2, is that God wants our hearts to participate in it. And it's not just something that's in the Old Testament. It's also in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians 9, it talks about how God um, wants you to give as your heart is led. Yeah. And that he doesn't want you to be a reluctant giver. He wants you to be a cheerful giver. Right. Like, let's (laughs) give in joy here. Let's have fun in what we're doing. So that's cool to see that in the middle of the Old Testament. and. You know, we've read some of these crazy passages last week or so that in it you still see the heart of God. Yeah. Which is really cool. Well, another thing to kind of note here is, and this is referenced again, you know, later in the in the book of Exodus, but this is a creative process. Yeah. Like the, the invitation here isn't, you know, just come and, uh, you know, sign your name and do your thing and walk away. It's actually bring your unique uh, giftings, bring, you know, the, the things you have ownership over, mm-hmm. things that you have worked hard for that you have in your life, bring them things that you love, that you're passionate about, um, as an offering to me. Yeah. And I'm going to, I actually gave you those to begin with and for now sure. you're giving them back to me. And yeah. so there's this, there's something that creativity does that allows space in our life 
to participate with God at a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's still true today. That's why creating space, you know, being active with spiritual disciplines, like those might sound kind of rigid disciplines, Mm -hmm. but really all they are meant to do is to create avenues where we can participate with God. And like in, like this creative process right now in Exodus. It's mm-hmm. so cool. For sure. So the chapter continues, and we get to the Ark of the Covenant. Yes. And many of you probably think of Indiana Jones. Oh. We're going through the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> I didn't go there. The Ark of the Covenant is brought Indiana Jones, and some weird stuff goes down. But here, the Ark of the Covenant is created, and mm. again, it kind of gives descriptions as to what it looks like. Mm-hmm. But the Ark of the Covenant contained a few things. It contained the Ten Commandments, I guess 2.0, because Moses smashed the first ones. Um, and then it contains... Right, that hasn't happened yet, but yes. Yeah, but they have to Soon. swap them out. Mm-hmm. And then um, Aaron's staff and a pot of manna mm-hmm. of the bread. Mm-hmm. They, they keep those in the ark where God's presence is. And mm-hmm. as you keep looking through the descriptions as to what happens here, uh, verse 17, mm-hmm. it talks about how really this becomes God's mercy seat. It's at this place where the atonement of sins like occurs. It says, mm-hmm. make an atonement cover of pure gold, two and a half cubits long and a cubit and a half wide. Mm. Make two cherubim out of hammered gold at the ends of the cover. And make one cherubim at the end of the second cherubim at the other. Make them one piece with a cover at the two ends. They're supposed to be touching each other, like the tips of their wings touch each other. Mm. They call this mercy seat because this is where the atonement is like supposed to be made. The priest would eventually come Mm. in here once a year and make a sacrifice. And it's a blood sacrifice. And so What's crazy to think, again, is that only the high priest gets to come in here. They're making their sacrifices to God for the forgiveness of sins, but they have to do this continually again. Right, all the time. And again mm-hmm. and again, and it's bizarre. So what's interesting, some of the language here, though, gets mm-hmm. translated and mm-hmm. used in the New Testament for just to connect the dots for everyone to see what mm-hmm. the Old Testament people had to do on repeat, Jesus did once and for all. Yeah. So we wrote down some of the scriptures that kind of talk about that. Bobby, you want to read them to us? Yeah, the first one comes from 1 Corinthians. This is chapter 5, verse 7. Cleanse out the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, as you are unleavened. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Mm-hmm. So again, all the Old Testament sacrifices and then the blood sacrifice here, Jesus Christ did it. So we had Passover, Amazing. and then from right. that point on, right. the sacrificial system continues. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. what's the next one, Romans? Romans 3, yep, this is verse 25. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness mm. because in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. Mm. Okay, and the last one, First John 2. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. That Those connecting points, I feel like, don't usually jump out in our head when we're just reading Exodus by ourselves. We're reading, like, okay, oh, how uh, long a cubit? What's a cherubim look yeah. like? Yeah, but then to have them actually to realize, like, no, this is the continuation of a story that's been woven throughout the entirety of the Bible, like all of scripture Yeah, to have this language, you know, from thousands of years before be totally relevant in the life, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Like we're reading in the new Testament like that, that helps me even understand really the importance of what the Ark of the covenant, the tabernacle, like what that was to these people then. That's mm-hmm. crazy. And I guess just to kind of wrap this podcast up and kind of what we're talking about, yeah. I appreciate verse 22 again, where it says, there above the cover, the atonement cover, between the two cherubim mm. that are over the Ark of the Covenant of the Law, I will meet with you mm-hmm. and give you all my commands for the Israelites. Mm. That's the one place that God would meet his people and guide them and counsel them and direct them. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I just praise God, we don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> that we have <laughs> Jesus his spirit's been given to us yeah. and that God meets us there. Like there was a tabernacle and then from the tabernacle went to the temple yeah. and then come Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. your bodies are now temples of God's presence, yeah. the Holy Spirit. And I guess one of the things that I, I guess I'm taking away looking at this is that think about the reverence, the awe, the intentionality people had to go through and have to be in God's presence. Right. And I think sometimes I just go throughout my day and it's just mm-hmm. lolly la lolly la mm-hmm. going through my day. It's mundane. I'm bored. Where the reality is the holy God mm-hmm. lives in me and he's with me. Yeah. He's with you mm-hmm. and you listeners. So, I mean, what does it look like for us to be more mindful of just 
this very fact throughout the day that yeah. we're in the presence of the living God. And at one point in time, people had to go through all these steps because God's passion and his holiness was so strong that they would be killed if they went into the presence. So God's holiness hasn't changed. Right. But the way he relates to us has. Yeah. And so still just being mindful and reverent of mm-hmm. like, wow, God, mm-hmm. thank you for living in us and yeah. being with us. I think that's kind of become a prayer of mine this Lenten season too. So this is actually our first Monday in Lent. So this, you know, special 40 days as we journey to the cross for mm-hmm. Easter is, um, for me reading this, is how am I making space in my life to have creative moments, to have consistent moments where I'm actually saying like, okay, Lord, like, I trust these things that I'm reading in scripture. Like, yeah. h- help me, Holy Spirit, meet you today yeah. and help me create space. Like Uncle Ken, Pastor Ken talks about how he, you know, Uncle has Pastor this- Ken. Yeah, he has this chair that that's like the chair that he sits in and he'll do his devotions. And that's, you know, where he will, he will consistently meet with the Lord yeah. like in this chair. And so, you know, that's a special way to donate literally a geographic place in your house, outside, in your car, before work, after work, during lunch, on your bed, before you even get out of bed, on your knees before bed, like somewhere where we can just invite the Holy Spirit to expand his presence in our life that day that we yeah. can meet him. And our awareness of him and yep. just, it's very intentional again. Yeah. It's intentional. So it's a good word. Yeah. So thanks for, you know, chugging along through Exodus with us. There's been some ups and downs and confusing chapters, but you're doing it. You're doing a good job. <laughs> and uh, we're on the journey with you and we're try our best to you know, always ask what do we learn about God and ourselves in these chapters, but also to flush out some of the confusing parts when it comes to sacrifices and the treatment of people. And uh, it's been exciting. It's been good to learn. So Yeah. Thanks yeah. for listening, you guys. God bless you today. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his countenance towards you and give you his peace. Have a great day.